Today I want to be a little more informal. I don't get a lot of chances to kind of have a group that's like not a, a, a like especially with high school, sometimes they're in a big auditorium and you can't really have a conversation. So hopefully today we have a little bit of a conversation. Um, and I get to learn a little bit about your school and where you're at. Um, and then, you know, we can do like, maybe I'll do a few more pieces and then we can ask some questions and go back and forth, but even in the middle. Um, I'm very fluid with uh, kind of the way that you say it. So for me, you know, I use poetry as a tool, as a way to engage. Are there any like rappers or poets or actors or artists in the room? Let me see by raise a hand. Anybody? Anybody? A few? A few? Okay. So everybody shot then. Um, but for me, like, art becomes a tool. And the type of work that I do in a lot of ways, um, you're struggling around issues of identity and culture, um, of history. You know, I identify as a Chicano, as a Mexican, as a Latino, as a person of color underneath the rubric of race in the United States. And it seems like a really long drawn out identity. And all of you at some point in your life, right, will have to figure out how you identify. Because identity is more than just checking a box, right? A lot of times we're just giving these forms, and oh, you need to fill this out. Um, but for me, the things that are important to me, I wanted to identify with. And so, as a Latino in an urban area, I've, I've lived in New York, I've lived in Harlem, I've lived in Chicago, um, currently living in Detroit. Um, and for me, you know, I wanted to be connected to the struggles that are happening in my community. And because I had all this rage when I was learning about racism, you know, I've been writing poetry since I was your age, basically, right? This is like a high school, so what, what grade do we have right now? Is it a mixed group? Nine, nine through 12. So you like, at that point in my life, um, I was struggling with issues and trying to figure out some of these issues I was seeing in the news around racism, around um, the crime that was happening in my community, around how people viewed me, right, just based off of maybe my cultural identity. Um, and so poetry became that outlet. And I would encourage all of you to find your own outlet, right? What is your outlet that makes you feel good? Because sometimes it's just ha us having one thing. I don't think if I have poetry, um, I would necessarily be as success successful as I am. You know, I'm not a famous person, but I'm a working artist, which means all I do full time is art. And I have the privilege to be able to travel around the world and meet a lot of really cool people and interact with young people like you. Um, but I get to make a living from it. And not a lot of people, the percentage of artists are really small. And then if you go to the percentage of artists that are people of color, it's even smaller. So for black and Latino, it becomes even smaller to live off of your art. A lot of times we see like MTV and we see like different award shows and we see rappers on blogs and you know, whether it's like drill music in Chicago um, with like Lil Turk and all these other folks that are rapping, Lil Dirk and all this other like, you know, kind of drill music. We see one image of that and we don't see the other side of it. And the other side of it is there's a whole generation of artists that make a living from doing work. And so I hope that my work is more than just words, right? That it has more of an impact. Um, and if I can impact any of you today, um, it's something positive long term, you know? And I would say, you know, just stay in contact online on social media. Um, I get to visit a lot of places and I've seen rappers that go from being in high school 15 to spitting bars to actually performing, right? Like one of my friends, one of my former students, um, Produced 3005 by Charles Gambino. And he was just one of my kids in one of my programs. And, you know, he's a producer, he's a young Mexican kid. Um, my actual producer who produced my album produces for Chance the Rapper, worked with DJ Khaled. And um, he produced like a poetry album for me. So I'm saying these names is like music industry names, but more importantly, is that they were just kids that I seen in the, in the youth program. You know what I mean? And they were able to get like, like like that, 3005 was just up for a grand. And he was just some kid from Humble Park, which is my neighborhood in Chicago. Um, and in the same breath, you know, one of my other friends was just given a Golden Globe for a, a TV show called uh, Jane the Virgin. And so those are people that were just like you, sitting in a school and were thinking about all these dreams that they had. And it's not necessarily, maybe you're not a performer or want to be famous, right? but we all want to make an impact. And you have to challenge yourself to figure out what is your impact. 
because not everybody's gonna be right on TV talking about some of these issues, but your role is just as important. A person who does community work, a person who makes an impact in your sphere of influence is just as important as somebody who goes on television. So um, I would say, you know, for me, think about your sphere of influence. Who would be in your sphere of influence? If I said sphere of influence, who would that be? What's that? So your family is one. Who else would be in your sphere of influence? Go ahead, what? I thought you were going to say something. Yeah, I see you got some potential. I know you're gonna say something. But who else would be in your sphere of influence? Your friends. Your friends are probably one of the biggest ones, right? And so the impacts we can make are within our family, within our friends, within our school, within our community. Um, and if you have something that bothers you that you want to challenge, that's your role, like as a young person. It's interesting that there's this. Anyone know the word uh, apathy? What's the word apathy mean? Anyone know the definition of apathetic? Somebody better figure it out. <laughs> What's the word apathetic mean? Nobody knows what apathetic means? It's okay if you don't know, right? It's like, if you don't know, we don't know. Apathetic really just means that like, you don't care about something either way. And a lot of times, what I'm told is young people don't care about social issues. You know, like it's always like old people talking about young people and what they're not doing. And in some ways, it's interesting because, like, as young people, you inherited the world from old people. And so, old people kind of gave you the world already messed up, and then they expect you to somehow be better than them. Um, so, what I would say, though, is all over the world, I've seen people that are young, your age, engaged in social change around issues of social change. What's one of the big issues that popped up um, in the last, let's say, six months? in the U.S.? Racial <coughs> racial issues. Okay, let's, let me, I'm trying to get the students. Let me get the students, hold on. What are some of the issues? <laughs> Come on, man, y'all y'all too quiet for me. Go ahead. So, young kids getting shot, and in particular, young black kids getting shot, right? In the U.S. But how did that issue relate to you? Because I'm not a young black kid, but it still relates to me, right? So how does that locally relate to you? And then what impact is that in your life? What's another issue that people face? Let's say locally. What about here in your community? What's something that's an issue? Go ahead. Teen suicide. So teen suicide, right? So that's a big issue. I'm gonna come back to you. So teen suicide is a big issue in a lot of with a lot of young people, right? So then if that's something that's important, how do you make that impact locally? Right? At what point do you make that impact locally? Go ahead, what were you that human trafficking? That's another issue. So how do you connect to that? Right? We all think that we're disconnected from this stuff, but in reality, we're all a part of it, and we all have some type of responsibility to it, right? Like how many of you have younger siblings, right? Raise your hand if you have younger siblings or younger person in your life. What is your role to that person? What is your responsibility to that person? Right? And so when you, when you think about these things as young people, you already have a tremendous amount of responsibility. But how, did that, how do you take that energy and do something positive to someone else? And a lot of times it's not just about what we can do for us. It's how we get to that next level and do things for other people. 